Hello everyone, this is Moshe, the Electric Israeli, and thank you for joining my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and help me change the world. One electric car at a time. Thank you to all of my Patreons, supporters, and those who help me keep this channel going. I love it. So I am been breaking records with this Tesla Model 3, which I got almost two years ago. Waited for it for two and a half years since the day I ordered it. And I have now crossed 110,000 kilometers uh, with this car, which is uh, over 68,000 miles. Uh, and that is in less than two years. Uh, the typical driver will drive this amount of miles in probably five years. So there's a reason why that will go over it later. So I wanna do this review especially those who want to buy a Tesla, a new Tesla Model 3, or even if you want to buy a used Tesla Model 3, need to know what to expect. If you're buying a high mileage Tesla Model 3, need to know what to expect, what what is really uh, the real world experience. So I'm gonna go over some important stuff about the real world experience. And if those of you, those of you who follow my channel know that I only talk about real world stuff. I do not do experiments and try to break records for the slowest driver in the world. No, that's, I'm not interested in that. I give you real world stuff. So let's start, like I said, 110,000 kilometers, 68,000 miles. And the three or four main, main issues, main components that are the most important in electric cars is obviously the range, which has to do with the size of the battery, efficiency, and all that. So the range is very important. And there's, of course, a difference between uh, rated range and world, uh, real world range. Uh, charging speed. Charging speed is crucial, especially for your day-to-day -day life uh, uh, of how you, uh, what you can do with the car if you can really charge it fast. And I'm talking about the level two charge, not necessarily supercharger, of course. And then speaking of superchargers, the uh, supercharger speeding, a uh, speed, a uh, charging speed, and infrastructure. So the range, the charging speed, and the ability to take it on trips and to charge fast on the road and the infrastructure are so important. Now, related to that is battery degradation. So you should know if you are buying. A, a, a Tesla Model 3 car that has 40, 50, 60, 70,000 miles, know that what it said, you're not gonna see what the car actually said when it was manufactured. And I'll go over that in a minute of how my battery degraded and what you see now when you charge the car. I'm gonna show you an example. So let's talk about this particular car. They don't make this version of this car. This is a rear wheel. 325 rated range mile now there's right away there's an asterisk there and when i bought this car the rated range was 310. later on there was uh software up, uh, updates and software updates are a whole topic by itself we'll get to it a little bit later it was a software update for this car and it got m a miles boost just like it got acceleration boost it's just amazing the software update of this i having said that i never uh, charge this car a hundred percent only when i do a range test or if i really have to go far away and and i just want to go as much as i can but other than that you charge your car to 80 percent 85 percent even 90 percent you're gonna be fine you don't want to charge it to 100 percent ever it's on a daily basis it's not good so those times that I charged to 100% when I bought it and a few times in between, I never saw 310 miles, it was 305. And when it got a charge, a, a, a software update boost, it was supposed to show 325, I saw 317, 318. I never saw the actual, uh, that has to do with the batteries and how they aligned and all that stuff, it has to do with many things. But you never, you will never see the rated range actually showing on the battery. Now that I said that the real world range is very, very different. Now, when I say real world is you drive the speed limit plus five or 10 miles an, uh, an hour, you use the uh, climate control instrument, heat and, and cold and all that. So for that, I give you the formula basically. I said 20 to 40% 
less range in the winter from the rated range that you charge it to let's say let's pick a number 300 miles so you will see 60 or 70 miles less in the real world range in the winter or even more and i would say 10 percent or so uh, less range in the summer now this summer so far here in jersey was very hot like 90 to 100 degrees almost every single day so it's very very hot so the air conditioning are cranking so that's what you see now over time when you ch when you let's say you set your car for 80 percent and you're accustomed of seeing uh i don't know let's pick a number 280 miles okay all of a sudden you start to see less and less and less and less okay as you are growing up in miles okay so for example this morning i made an experiment and i charge it all the way up it got to 299 and then in the morning it showed 226 uh, yeah 296 297 so it, it not, did not even crank at the 300 uh, miles range in the summer which is now right now very very hot so this car conceivably lost 10 to 25 rated range which translates to real world range later on uh, of miles that's battery degradation okay so you you need to know that that's why i always recommend especially if you buy a used electric car is always to go if you can financially to go to for the biggest battery that you possibly can afford the bigger the battery the more room you have to uh, degrade and when you go on long trip the more range you have uh, between stops so that's why uh, the battery which in this car it's 75 kilowatt hour battery that's why it is so incredibly important now moving along for long range trips that's where i accumulated so many miles a mega mega trip of 1000 2000 3000 miles each uh several several times over drove it to canada to florida virginia maryland all over the east coast it is a fantastic, fantastic long range uh, trip car. Really, 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 really fantastic. Okay, you will go, you'll drive three, four hours, you'll charge uh, 10 to 25 minutes, depending how long you drove. And today with the supercharging, which is uh, level two is 150-ish kilowatt. And now there's a lot of level three, which is 250 kilowatt of charge. The, the lower the battery you come into the supercharging, the faster you can get charging and you can be at 10, 15 minutes. It's really fantastic. So the supercharging and making long trips with this car is uh, uh, fantastic. So like I said, the uh, uh, range right used to be 310, which is 496 kilometers and then moved up to 325 which is 520 kilometers in real world and i really averaged it it's it's really 250 miles which is around 400 kilometers of a real world range now speaking of long trip uh that you that you may conduct there is a very tiny uh this is a sedan very tiny uh trunk a 16 cubic feet there's also a very small frunk uh, it is you need to do acrobatic moves to if you have a family of four to go on a on a trip and 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 one trip i put a two a roof rails and the tule box on the on the on the roof to to carry stuff when we went on family vacation but you will pay heavily in real world range because of drag so you have to consider that and I always insist to carry a spare tire because I, I, I always worry that I'm gonna stuck somewhere and I, I know how to change tires. I've done it many times in my life. So it, it is a very challenging car to take on a road trip with a family. You really have to be acrobatically creative to put stuff in soft bags and whatever. For two people, you and your wife, girlfriend, husband, whatever, great you flatten out the seat in the back and you can put all your stuff with no issue i highly recommend not to put anything on top of the roof you will regret it <laughs> it it's really takes a lot of energy so it, it's it can be done i went on several family vacation with this car and it can be done but it is a challenge it is an absolute challenge i have to say 
So the uh, space in the in the cargo in the front and the back is very limited. Very. That's why we love the Tesla Model Y. It's very very limited. All right. So that's uh, that's that. It is good for long trip, long trip, family trip, but it is very very, very hard. Speaking of long trip. One of the greatest things about Tesla is the autopilot uh, suit. The autopilot suite uh, had many variations over the years. Uh, so basically this car had the great option, I hope it will come back again, had the great option of something called enhanced autopilot. Now the only option is the uh, uh, full self drive. All Tesla cars come with, uh, you know, the basic autopilot that just keeps you in the lane basically. But this car, when I bought it, had the enhanced autopilot, which basically gives you the regular autopilot, like I am right now in the car, driving an autopilot. If I put the, a blinker, it will move a, a lane, which is awesome. That's what I used the autopilot for 99% of the time. It has the, in, in, uh, it has the navigator and autopilot, it has the smart summon, it has the auto park, it has the regular summon that you can drag the car back and forth. It's great, these things that you use maybe once. But what you do use all the time is the um, autopilot with the option to move from lane to lane uh, uh, while you're driving on the highway, which I am uh, doing right now as we speak. So uh, the autopilot I, I, is just amazing. I absolutely love it. It is so extraordinarily convenient, so safe so relaxing so soothing it's really 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 great it still has one major problem i spoke about it in many of my uh, uh videos and that is the phantom stop phantom slowdown all of a sudden it slows down for no particular reason whatever it sees speed limits streets below so this is an issue so when you drive an autopilot like i am right now on the highway always Keep your hand, at least one hand on the wheel, two hands better. Keep your right uh, foot ready to react, accelerate, brake, whatever that is, because it will have a phantom brake for no reason. Does it happen a lot? No, but it happens enough for you to uh, be uh, uh, alert. Now, I wanna to talk to you about maintenance and repairs. Um, you know, I naturally, I see a lot of Tesla videos and I don't appreciate uh, what I call false information, like people, oh, this car is no maintenance, no nothing. Okay, there is, there are two different things. There are things that you have to do on these cars that you would do on any car. Okay, uh, every every car needs tires. This car needs tires. I I, I changed two sets of tires already because of my long uh, range driving. All right, uh, wiper blades. You need the wiper blades. Uh, my front windshield window got cracked. To change that, I hit a, a pothole. The arm on the left, uh, the front left uh, wheel uh, cracked. I had to change that. That was a $650 hit. And oh no, so there are things that all cars is. When somebody tells you, oh, hey, there's no expenses for Tesla cars, that's, that's not true. That's completely not true. There are things that you have to do that are required because things just happen. However, there are things that you only do in gasoline cars that you will not do in a Tesla car. For example, brake paddles. I mean, brake paddles, everybody will change brake paddles. 25, 30,000, 35,000 miles. Not in this car. This car, close to 70,000 miles. Because of the regenerative braking, there, there's no need to change the, the brake pads. They can last, I don't want to say forever, but they can last a long time. Okay, you can barely use them because of their agendas. That's great. Brakes can cost three to five hundred dollars a hit every time you change it. If you drive a lot, more often, maybe once or twice a year, uh, maybe once a year or every two years. And anyway, so that's great. Of course, there are no oil changes. So that's amazing. Never have to do oil changes. Third thing, I don't think I ever spoke about it because I had to do it last week and that's why I remember. No inspection. There's no, there's, there's no exhaust here, so you need to take it to the, the Department of Motor Vehicle, the most hated department in American history. So you don't have to uh, uh, change the, uh, uh, to, to do inspection. Now I remember, I had to take my Chevy Volt last week, because it does have an exhaust, it's a plug-in hybrid. So I didn't do it for the first four years, but then, uh, 
pay attention to the stickers. Oh my God, I'm six months too late. So I went and I've done it. Not in here. That's great. That is a great bonus. That's like a day of your work. A, a, a whole day of work. So that's amazing. And of course, all the other uh, maintenance like a... Uh, you know, like the carburetor and pistons and all these things that regular gasoline cars have. Here you don't change. However, you do have to change the cabin filter. And also some, uh, every now and then you have to change the brake fluids. So that's a, a, a very uh, important thing. Now let me tell you about other things that I had to uh, fix in this car. So the experience I have with uh, repairs going to the Tesla center, Tesla repair center, the service center, is I have to say, me personally, it was very good. Very good, I went there many times for all kinds of things that I had to do. I'm about to go next week for a really big uh, uh, service, not service, repair. The cracked windshield in the front, the uh, rotated the tires, maybe alignment, the charge port doesn't open manually, all kinds of things like and also check the battery to see if the degradation is something I need to worry about uh, too much we'll see we'll see about that I can tell you that small things they're very good you know if you have small repairs they're very good tires and things like that no big deal. but the windshield I had a day two weeks ago and they didn't get the part so and I really didn't want anybody to uh, uh, to do my windshield other than Tesla because of all the sensors and everything so I'm driving it, it's fine, it's no big deal. But uh, the delays in getting an appointment or if you need a big, big important part can be uh, for a while. But I have to say, it's all touchless. They're very nice, it's all touchless. They uh, give you a car, wait for you outside. Last time I had to do something small in the car. There was a car, with, uh, Tesla Model S waiting for me. Or if it's a short one, they'll send you home with an Uber or Lyft. And, and their expense, so it's no big deal, nothing whatsoever. So uh, it's really, um, really a, a good experience. Now some people, you know, have, have a lot of complaints, but if you plan it right, it's fine. I mean, I trust them, they know what they're doing, they're very kind, they're very responsive. You get an email, you get a text, you get phone call, the multiple touch points. Uh, to get you in the groove of, uh, of, go of, of uh, you know, of doing the repair. So, you know, cars, cars have repairs. What can you do? All right, let me go, uh, let me go on to software update. I mean, that's Tesla almost uh, legendary uh, uh, trademark of software update, something that the auto industry never seen before. Everybody's trying to catch up now with their version of a Kakamemi um, uh, software update, but I, I don't even remember how many software updates I have. I wish to get so excited every time. Now it's like, ah, it's a, yeah, sure, of software updates. Yeah. Let me just mention five or three, whatever it is, comes to my mind. Uh, rage, range extend boost, uh, sentry mode, dog mode, uh, camp mode, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, smart summon. Smart Summon was also uh, a, a software update. Navigate on autopilot in this car was a software upgrade. It didn't come with it at the beginning, believe it or not. So that was also a big, huge uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, and on, I mean, who, who remembers? It's just amazing. Like, like this car is completely different from what it was uh, when I bought it. Uh, last thing I want to touch is obviously the appearance inside and outside. Obviously, it's a five-seater sedan. Amazing, beautiful, clean 15-inch screen. Nothing nothing too complicated. I love the air-conditioned vents. I love the touch screen, the voice command. The outside is absolutely stunning, beautiful, beautiful uh, 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 looking car. Aerodynamic, modern, amazing head turner until today. Anybody who comes to this car until today. Uh, I still hate the doorknobs, <laughs> the way you have to open the door. But you know what, I'll get over it. So I know it was a little long uh, uh, review, but uh, you know, it, it's been a great experience and I hope you uh, buy uh, one for yourself, used one or new one. If you buy a new one, please use my referral code. You can get a thousand free uh, supercharging miles and I get that too. 
Thank you guys for watching. Questions below, comments below, and I see you tomorrow.